So I also want to show you how to use the same technique to analyze an RC circuit. So here we have a capacitor and we asked to find the voltage across that capacitor as a function of time. So uh, to analyze this, uh, of course, we follow the same procedure as before. So we need to know what is the initial value of that voltage. Uh, so let's quickly analyze the circuit as a kind of DC steady state for the uh, initial configuration. So we have here a 20 milliamp source. The switch is open, so it plays no role. There will be the 20 kilo ohm resistance in parallel with the 60 kilo ohm resistance. Then there is the 10 kilo ohm resistance and then our capacitor, but our capacitor becomes just an open circuit because we're analyzing its DC steady state behavior. So the thing we're trying to find is the voltage V naught here across this capacitor, um, but because there is no current flowing in this resistor, there is no voltage drop across that resistor. And so therefore the voltage here is actually the same. So what this uh, question boils down to is finding that voltage basically across this um, this part of the circuit and that's fairly easy to do with Ohm's law. So let's find the equivalent resistance of uh, these two which are in parallel. So it's basically 20 kilo ohms in parallel with 60 kilo ohms. Uh, this kind of right hand part of the circuit here plays no role because there is no current that will flow through that branch. Uh, so we can basically ignore it. Uh, so 20 in parallel with 60, um, bear with, I will just quickly calculate, uh, is 15. 15 kilo ohms. Uh, and so therefore by Ohm's law, our initial voltage is our resistance, that's 15,000. Uh, multiplied by our current, which is uh, 0.02. Uh, so again, bear with, I will just quickly calculate it, and that is 300 volts. Uh, we also need to know the final value. So again, we analyze the circuit in the final configuration. So just looking at the circuit diagram here, we will have the current source, the 20 milliamp current source, that will be now totally shorted through the switch. And so even though there is some other stuff here in the circuit, it actually won't matter at all. If you ever see this sort of pattern where you have a current source that is just shorted out, well, all the current will just go through that short and the rest of the circuit will receive none of it. So there will be no current flowing, therefore there will be no voltages across any of the resistors. Um, the capacitor will discharge its energy. It, it has a pathway to discharge its energy through the rest of the circuit, so it will eventually settle down to being fully discharged. So just kind of looking at the circuit and thinking about it, uh, we can see that the final voltage is zero. Uh, we also need to know the time constant. So in order to get the time constant, uh, we need to know what is the Thevenin resistance that the capacitor sees. So if I redraw my circuit uh, and I do a few things, then we'll be able to calculate that. So uh, here's, here's what I do. I uh, consider the uh, Thevenin resistance as seen by the capacitor. Uh, so if I remove the capacitor from my circuit and just put a couple of terminals there, so I have this, and I want to know, looking into these terminals, what is the Thevenin resistance? I also need to put the switch in its uh, after it moves position. So this switch will close. So the circuit looks like that. Um, and the other thing I need to do is deactivate uh, the independent sources. So deactivate the independent sources. Uh, so here we have a current source, right? A current source when you put 
uh, deactivate it goes to zero. So zero amps is the same as an open circuit. So basically we have this. Now looking into, uh, into these pins, I see here I have a short and that short goes across or is in parallel with these two resistors. And when you have anything in parallel with a short, it's like removing it from the circuit. Uh, so this, these resistors will have no impact. We're kind of deleting them by having that switch closed and, and shorting them out. So I can read it off directly from this diagram here. The Thevenin resistance that you see looking into those pins uh, is just 10 kilo ohms. Uh, so therefore we can calculate the time constant. So the time constant for an RC circuit is just R times C. So I have uh, 10 kilo ohms multiplied by our capacitance is 40 nanofarads. So 40 uh, by 10 to the minus 9. Uh, and again, bear with me, I'll just quickly calculate this. So that's 10,000 times 40 times 10 to the minus 9 is 0 0.00. .00 zero four seconds. Uh, so we can now pull everything together. So therefore our final uh, answer for the voltage transient, uh, we take the final voltage uh, plus the initial voltage minus the final voltage um, times e to the negative t divided by our time constant tau. Uh, and we substitute in our values. So our final voltage was 0, our initial voltage was 300. So final voltage is 0, um, initial voltage was 300, so this is just 300 minus 0, um, e to the negative t divided by our time constant, which is that. Uh, and so this tidies up a little bit further, that's 300 e to the negative t divided um, 0.4 milliseconds. Um, and there we have it. So similar process to analyzing um, both RC and RL circuits. So when you have an RC circuit, the key points of difference um, are that your DC steady state will have open circuits. Um, capacitors become open circuits. And your time constant is calculated using the formula of um, R times C. But otherwise, it's basically the same process.